everyone, Tom Bilek with the Hobart Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining today. We're very excited to launch our business enrichment series for the fall season. In this series, we'll be talking about several different aspects of business that will help you to take your business to the next level. Before we do that, however, we want to protect our base of business, and to talk a little bit about that today is Scott Templin from General Insurance Services. Mm -hmm. Scott, thanks so much for joining today. Hey, excited to be here. Scott, talk a little bit about your role at GIS. Oh, absolutely. So you brought it up great, protecting your base, right? So General Insurance's mission is to secure the future of the communities that we serve. And one of the things we're finding recently is that with the increase in cyber-related incidents, uh, we really needed to look at cyber uh, for security as something to really focus on. And so my role, my title at GIS is officially Cyber Risk Advisor. And as that, uh, I do twofold things. One, of course, is looking at cyber liability policies, which we can get into at another time. But the other aspect is what we're going to talk about today and, and how you manage cyber security kind of as an overall risk management approach uh, to your business. Now, let's just kind of put this on basic terms, Scott. Cybersecurity, mm -hmm. what is it and how can it impact our businesses? No, good question. And so let's ask this first. Cybercrime itself is a big deal right now. So we've seen a, a over 430% increase in ransomware attacks since 2019. So um, these types of attacks are when you, you get the thing that says, hey, your business is locked down and you're going to have to pay a ransom, whether it's Bitcoin or a million dollars, whatever it is to unlock your business. And so security, uh, cybersecurity is a way of kind of protecting your yourself from those inevitabilities. Uh, so when it comes to insurance, you obviously can have a liability policy that can help protect you from some of those things. Uh, but this is more of, think of the sprinkler system in your business to kind of help protect you from being attacked in the first place or how you respond after an attack. So good idea to take a more proactive approach when it comes to cybersecurity. Now, just kind of curious, who are these uh, bad actors? Who are these perpetrators mm -hmm. of cybercrime? A lot of times you, when you think of that, you think of TV and movies, and you see the guy with the hoodie in a basement, you know, typing away on his computer. And while that may be accurate in some instances, a lot of the biggest perpetrators now are, are foreign actors. You'll see it from Russia or China uh, or other entities out there. And why that can matter, specifically in the insurance realm, is if it is a foreign actor, say someone acting on the state of like a China or a Russia that locks down your business, uh, that can be considered terrorism. And insurance specifically will not pay ransom if it's a terrorist attack. So knowing who the actors are, who the bad people are, can really matter. Um, that's not always going to be the case. It could just be somebody looking to make a quick buck. But the truth is, it's on a global level now. It's almost war at this point. Cyber war is probably an appropriate term to use. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of times we assume cyber, or cyber theft is associated with the Big crime, with big companies rather. Mm -hmm. um, we hear about the power grid perhaps being shut down, or yeah. all of the cash registers and uh, the mass merchandiser uh, right. uh, being shut down. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case all the time. It, it can impact small business, correct? Oh, absolutely, and it, and it does all the time. A lot of businesses now, especially the bigger ones, they're throwing a lot of money at this. They're putting big money to protect their big money. And so the people that are trying to attack them, these, these bad actors, it's a lot of work now to, to get into those big businesses. Meanwhile, some of the smaller ones don't have any type of security at all. They're not doing anything. So if you think about it, maybe it's throwing out a broader net. It's a lot easier to hit a couple mom and pops or some smallers. We've seen a lot of municipalities have been hit recently and, and, and do it that way rather than hitting the bigger businesses. So no, the size of the business, smaller is almost more dangerous now because they don't have the means to protect themselves in the way that the bigger businesses do. And okay, so many of those small to medium-sized businesses that, that may very well be members of the Hobart Chamber of Commerce or <laughs> yeah. other chambers for that matter, uh, they can be impacted. What are just a couple of quick, real, uh, quick tips perhaps that... Uh, uh, these businesses might um, want to take into consideration. Absolutely. The first, the, the biggest one I'm going to say, if you've never heard the term multi-factor authentication, learn it now, look it up, or, or call or ask me about it, because that's going to be your biggest protection. What that is, is if, if some of you guys are using it, it's when you just log into your email or to your business platform, and then your phone dings, and you have to put in a little code in order, mm -hmm. even though you have the password. 
that is going to protect you. Most passwords can be brute forced hacked in no time at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter what you do, if you have the greatest password in the world, eventually a computer is going to just be able to figure it out. Mm-hmm. But by having that, you're going to severely protect yourself. Travelers actually came out with some numbers, and they said that over 99% of businesses uh, that had multi-factor on would have prevented the claim. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the biggest step. Uh, there's some others as far as like the way that you save your backups. Um, you want to keep those, uh, you know, offsite or encrypted. That's a little bit more detailed. The multi-factor is really where I would would focus. If you're not doing that yet, that's kind of the base level. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, uh, there's some some ways to go about that. But that would be my biggest tip. Okay, so there's certainly a lot to learn mm-hmm. when it comes to cybersecurity and. Uh, Certainly well worth the time investment, wouldn't you say? I agree, yes. (laughs) Well, to that fact, we have a a very special program that's going to take place here, right here at the Hobart Chamber of Commerce. (laughs) And, uh, Scott, would you like to talk a little bit about that? I would, and I'm going to point out the title first, because this whole time we've been talking, you think cybersecurity, you probably think, hey, my IT guy, let's get him on the phone, right? Let's help him protect us. The title of the program is actually Cybersecurity is Not an IT Problem. Uh, Cybersecurity should really be looked at from the top down. And, And to be very blunt, we have have found that cybersecurity programs that do not have buy-in from owners, owners and leadership, uh, just they fail. They don't work. You're, not to belittle IT uh, people because they do a great job in this space, but it's just so much over-encompassing that goes into it. It's a whole risk management process in order to protect yourself. Uh, we like to look at it as a, a health decision. So think of your IT guy as your general uh, practitioner. So you'll go, they'll do your checkups, they're making sure your computers are running, they make sure you got your firewalls in and all the technical stuff that you don't want to have to worry about. Uh, But you go to them, you know, you get your annual checkup and you're doing fine. But if you have a very serious heart problem and you need to get surgery, well, your your general practitioner, your doctor's not the one who's doing that surgery. Mm -hmm. He's going to send you to, you know, a cardiologist or someone, cardiac surgeon to look at that. Think of cybersecurity in that realm. It's such a big deal now that being specialized in it is really important, and that's going to be the best way to to kind of protect yourself and and look after your own cyber health. So, yeah, it's October 12th um, here at the Chamber at 9 a.m. We'll go over some of the things we talked about today, the the current cybersecurity landscape, like kind of how things are looking. I have even more fun numbers, if that's your thing, about how crazy it is out there. And then we'll uh, we'll also kind of go into what I just talked about, how they can fail if you don't have of ownership, that top down. We'll talk some more about best practices like the multi-factor and things you can do now, including insurance related. So if you have a cyber liability policy, it can kind of help you because kind of go through some of that. And, and then really just how do we prioritize what to change? Because mm-hmm. as we talked about, a lot of businesses, especially locally, they can't spend the type of money that Disney can spend to do that. So how do we focus on what we can do better? Um, we're partnered with Lachesis in this. Uh, Chris Keslin is the person who's going to be presenting with me. He's worked with these Fortune 500 companies. He's bringing the type of practices that they use down to a local level, um, which is a really important thing right now. So we're really looking forward to it and really hope to have a good group out here. Awesome. So October 12th at 9 a.m. right here at the Hobart Chamber <laughs> of Commerce. Uh, there's no registration fee for the program. But registration is strongly encouraged, Mm -hmm. uh, just so we can get a head count. Uh, We want to keep the group relatively small, so it'll be very interactive. Is that right? Yeah, we'd love to be able to answer questions specifically. This is all about your business. Everyone's going to be different, a manufacturer or a small shop. We want to be able to help you specifically. So we, we want to have a good group, and we hope to encourage questions during it. Awesome. Well, space is limited, so please go on our website, hobertchamber.com, to register for this event. Once again, October 12th at 9 a.m. right here at the Chamber office. Scott, thanks so much for joining today. We really appreciate it. Hey, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me chat about it. Really looking forward to getting more in-depth with those who come to the uh, the seminar. Thanks so much. I'm Tom Bailick with the Hobart Chamber of Commerce. We'll see you soon. Take care. (laughs) 